that over there. Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez here. We're going to talk about, again, a subject that needs to be repeated every once in a while. In fact, I think I'm going to repeat this every month or so. When you choose to refill, you're opening up a Pandora's box, literally a can of worms. You have to do this perfectly. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. And I have been bombarded with questions and emails and comments about people having problems after they refill. And basically what it means is that they have performed a modification on the cartridges that require that and it kind of went wrong. Well, I'm gonna tell you that Epson does not have that kind of problem simply because they just don't allow you to modify their cartridges. You have to rely on refillable cartridges. And those are only at this point able to be used on a certain family of printers, usually the older ones. I think the last one was the P600, and that's over here, right here, about that point right now, depending on what firmware you have installed. All you need is a refillable cartridge. Right now, there are self-priming cartridges. All you need to do is add ink, and you are set. They have auto-reset chips. They reset once they reach empty. After you remove them, top them off, put them back in. They do not lose the prime like some of the older types do again pretty much dummy proof okay and this is a big dummy right here i've made every mistake in the book but what we are really interested in is our canon pro 100s and our canon pro 10s now thank goodness they allow us to make that or go down that perilous road of refilling and the reason mostly is universal the cost of ink Oh, we cannot afford the inks. Well, you should have thought about that when you got a photo printer. That is harsh, but it's the truth. It is not cheap to print at home, but we choose to do so anyway. And so we are looking for third-party inks that will allow us to at least cut down substantially our printing costs by lowering that cost per milliliter of ink, which can be quite high. Now, like I said, the Pro 100, the Pro 10. Of all the printers, the Pro 10 is the easiest to refill. You need to buy a resetter, okay? And you must, must, must always refill it the second it goes empty, okay? The reason being is that there is an accordion bag inside here. It is shaped just like that, like a, you know, when you get a paper bag from the grocery store, if they still have them, we do. And it is kind of folded like an accordion. And you open it up and then you can collapse it again and store it under your stove. That's what we do. Uh, if you allow it to sit after empty for a while, that bag will expand back up. And remember, as ink is being used, that bag is collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. And then it reaches finally empty, declared by that chip right here. Fill it now. Reset it and fill it now. The ink will be absorbed about as fast as you can squirt it with one of these bottles, okay? Do not let it sit. In fact, without one of these clips, that, that's a cardinal sin. That bag will expand. That sponge, that sponge right here. There is no sponge inside, only on the exit port. That will dry up. Ink cannot get through. Why? Because there's air inside. Because that bag has expanded. Now, there is a way, and it's very tedious. If you don't have an adapter, which I will talk about next, you basically do this. You squirt. I don't have any ink here, but let's make believe we do. Two or three drops and squeeze the sides. And you will see foam being ejected. Let it retract. Let it relax again. Add a few more drops, squeeze, add a few more drops. That'll take forever, but eventually you will have a cartridge free of air and one that weighs 32 to 33 grams, and that is your full weight. You want to give it a nice wrap on the table. Do not overfill it at this point. In fact, underfill it a little bit, wrap it, and then add a few more drops one at a time until it weighs 32 to 33 grams. There is a difference between the manufacturing process, of course, and so they will not all weigh the same amount. Now, 
What you want is to be able to have a dry sponge or one that appears dry, not sopping wet. You squeeze aside and some ink will begin to sort of flood the outer surface of that sponge. Relax, ink will go back in. Now, clip it and store it in this position. This will keep that outdoor or exit sponge wet. That's what you need to do. That's it. And people still have problems with these cartridges. They're the easiest to refill requiring zero, and I mean zero, modification. You can reset them and refill them. I don't know what Canon was thinking, okay? They made it really simple this time. All right, now comes the, the king of Canon printers, the Pro 100. Yeah, those cartridges do require modification. And I will then discuss also, oh, by the way, the adapter, the adapter, the famous adapter. You can get them from octoinc.co.uk. They're in the UK, so you will have to pay for shipping to the US if you want one of those adapters, okay? Now, you can make your own. If you have a Dremel tool, you take a syringe needle, okay, and you measure it. You drill a hole that matches that diameter. You're going to use a cutoff tool and cut off most of the needle until you have about an eighth of an inch long stub on that needle. You're going to insert it through that hole. You're going to drill it right through, right through even the gasket. You're going to insert it until it protrudes just slightly. Okay, you see it slightly protruding through that hole you just drilled. Well, that needle is not going to be secure. So you take some gel type crazy glue and you start building up a little kind of a, like a little um, fillet, they call it, in a little mountain and uh, just let it dry, add some more, let it dry, add some more until it's just, I mean, securely glued. You could roughen off the surface a little bit to allow the glue to adhere even better. And that adapter will allow you to collapse that bag. And in fact, you could also use it to flush the internals of the cartridge if you think you need to. All right, so that is the easy way to do the Pro 10 ink flow. It's always, always, always going to diminish in efficiency the minute you mess around with your cartridges. Okay? Get over that thinking. There's no way you're going to be able to maintain a 100% ink delivery efficiency once you start tampering with these cartridges, period. So live with that and make sure that you perform the modification if required perfectly, okay? Otherwise you're gonna have problems and we'll cover some of those problems as we continue on. Now, an OEM cartridge for the Pro 100, these are the ones that I use for my testing of the PC42 SE inks. So I originally loaded a full set of OEM yeah, I sacrificed that set just for you guys. Onto my Pro 100, did a couple cleaning cycles and proceeded to do my test prints. And then I replaced it with, of course, a full set of flush and filled cartridges with PC42 SE. Now, notice that the top of the sponge is not saturated. This is the way it's supposed to be. And this is only achievable when they do a vacuum factory fill, okay? You can't do that. So what we are doing, we're removing that fill ball right here. The minute you do that, if I was to do that right now, that sponge would immediately saturate. And you don't want that to happen because you don't want this flood of ink at the top of the sponge. You want your flood of ink at the bottom of the sponge. Why? Well, that's where the ink comes out. And you want it to be as saturated as possible at the most important point the delivery point to the printhead, okay? So, yeah, imagine, as soon as I remove this ball, I have, I have severed that perfect hydraulic condition, okay? Now it's not going to work as efficiently. Now I'm relying on my expertise, refilling these to the proper level so that I never, ever get a fully saturated sponge on the top, which then can cause an airlock because ink can enter, there's a serpentine vent that allows air to come in as ink is going out. There's no other entrance, no other way to relieve the vacuum that you will generate as you're printing. So ink leaves, air has to come in. 
okay? And if you have ink inside that little passageway, the surface tension alone will prevent air from entering, okay? Yeah, and you will have ink starvation, oh boy. We'll talk about that later. So that's what happens the minute that you sever that hydraulic condition, if you will. So you're gonna remove that ball and you can use whatever method you choose. I use an exacto blade, number 11, and I score around it. Then I use something pokey. Even a, even a thumbtack will work. Just stick it into the ball and lever it off, okay? Simple as that. And then you will have a factory seat in that little internal cylindrical wall that holds a ball. So you remove the ball, and now a plug is not going to enter in there. It's going to partially enter because at the bottom of that cylindrical opening, there's a seat, a spherical seat that allows that ball to rotate, okay? And it's got a little hole underneath. That hole is not big enough for that plug to enter, okay? So you have to drill it out. All you're doing is drilling out the seat and not enlarging the inner diameter of that pre-existing factory hole. The most important part is that, okay? You're only removing the seat. You're not enlarging the actual existing factory. I mean, plastic injection, perfect surface. You don't want to tamper with that surface. You want to go ahead and drill out the bottom of that seat. That's all. Now, when you insert a plug, it's going to compress and it's going to then emerge past that hole because the hole you create with a five 30 seconds inch diameter bit is actually less diameter than the actual hole. So you're drilling a hole that is slightly less diameter than the existing hole. That forces the plug to compress and then pass through that hole that you just drilled and re-expand, creating a perfect seal. That is it. If you don't get that right, you're going to have a problem cart. We'll talk about the possible problems. Now, if you want to flush your cartridges, go ahead and do so. Okay, there are methods to do that. Many different reagents you can use. I just use Windex. Um, it's not necessary, except for the yellow cartridge. And most providers will not give you a replacement yellow cartridge. You have to do your own, and that has to be done properly, okay? That's another subject altogether. I've covered it on other videos. In fact, I have a playlist on simply the CLI-42 conversion or modification techniques. Many videos on that one. So here's what you do. If you buy inks from Precision Colors, they're going to give you a flush CLI-8 cartridge, which is identical physically to the CLI-42s. All you gotta do is very carefully remove that. Let me get one of these that's already open. Remove that chip. There's a little well spot right here. You need to use a razor blade and scrape that off. Remove the chip and attach it to the replacement cartridge. That will be your yellow chip, OEM. You need to put it on the cartridge they give you. And that will fool the printer into thinking it's an actual original yellow cartridge. Then you fill that one with the Precision Color Signature Edition yellow ink you will have no problems, no reactions that can possibly, and I use the word possibly, because we don't know if the new yellow ink has that problem still. We don't think so, but we cannot guarantee that for you. So again, it's up to you. So you take the responsibility, in other words. So they gave you a flush cartridge anyway, so take advantage of it. At later, you can then flush your yellow cartridge with Windex followed by water and hope that you get it nice and clean and then you're able to maybe put the chip if you wanted to put it back where it was uh, you can do so but it's not totally necessary all right so what can happen one of the problems that can happen when you do not drill that that seat properly is that you begin to then enlarge or rough up the very very smooth pristine molded inner wall of that original hole where the ball resided. So then your plug is not going to seal. And if your plug does not seal, you're gonna get a leaky plug. And where is it gonna leak? Inside your printer. Okay, and what happens is, even if it's a very minor leak, you're gonna to begin to lose ink. 
while your printhead is parked on the right side and you're not printing, ink might be leaking out. And then you're shocked that your chip reports that you have ink, but all of a sudden you start seeing streaks. Basically, that cartridge is no longer printing. That's actually pretty bad, okay? And, you know, the reason that happens is because the chip has no clue. The chip is not connected in any way with the physical amount of ink in your cartridge. That is up to you from now on to monitor. So if you got a leaky cartridge, there are other methods to sort of put a Band-Aid on that, if you will. But the best thing is to start over again. Don't even bother. It's just too much work. It's too iffy to try to add silicone, caulking, or maybe aluminum tape used for duct work. That kind of, yeah, those are fixes that you can do after the fact, after the after the fact that you failed at modifying your cartridge, okay? Really, that's that's the that's the true issue here. So, rather than go through all of that headache, okay, of modifying, well, seven out of your eight cartridges because you're going to get one already pre-modified, is just go ahead and buy a set of pre-modified and flush cartridges from Rick Johnson. Again, remember, I'm not pushing this guy because I get something from him. No, I get a thank you from him every once in a while. That is it. But he produces the best and most expertly processed set of cartridges for the Pro 100. All you got to do is pay him 60 bucks or send them your own cartridges if you have enough to spare. And he will process them for you for a fee, of course. And that's, that's the best way to go. You will not have any problems. Now, what can happen? So you start running out of ink. That means that that particular channel is not going to be receiving enough ink. In other words, the ink flow is going to be reduced. When you reduce ink flow, because printheads are, especially Canon printheads, are thermal based. They generate heat because they are actually boiling the ink before they eject it, droplet by droplet by droplet. And this snowball effect that will take place will begin to overheat that channel because you don't have enough coolant the ink is a coolant to keep that channel at the correct operating temperature think of it as your thermostat in your automobile for your radiator okay if that begins to fail you're either going to have a very cold running engine you get an engine light warning or a hot overheating engine you'll also get a you know engine light um, problem and you're beginning to smoke everywhere so that same thing happens with these print heads you have to provide them with enough ink flow because that acts as a coolant so say you have a leaky cartridge and you don't know about it and uh, you know your indicator says you're full but then you go and take a look and you're down to here maybe like this one let's see yeah like this one here and you say like wait wait wait, wait a minute uh, uh my my driver says that i am supposed to be 80 percent. no it leaked out so you continue to print at some point this will physically become empty you will damage that what is this photo magenta channel permanently okay permanently in this day and age print heads are expensive oh yeah so are printers yeah because there's this whole situation we're in now yeah Everything is selling for above retail almost. So be careful about that. You make sure that you, if you choose to do so yourself, you modify those cartridges, I mean expertly, so that they perform. They're never going to be 100%, okay? Please take that to the bank. They're never going to be 100%. You're tampered with them. They cannot perform like they did before you begin to drill out and, and, and mess around with your cartridges. But it's the only way that we have right now to do so. So people think, well, why don't I just drill a hole elsewhere? Yeah, because you end up with only about a 30 seconds of an inch wall space instead of about an eighth, actually about five thirty seconds worth of wall space to seal. Sealing is the most important thing you need to achieve with that plug, okay? Lousy seal, that means leaks, okay? Keep that in mind. Now, testing ink flow after you refill your cartridge. We're not gonna do it here because I didn't bring a cup with me. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a full cartridge, and by full, I mean an eighth of an inch from the top. Notice the difference in sponge saturation 
folks. Take a look at that. And this hardly has any ink left in it. Notice how, how oversaturated that sponge is. Okay? That's what happens. This is the perfect condition. This is mm, not so good. Okay? Good enough, let's just say. So, you fill your cartridge. You remove the bottom clip. And you hold it over a cup. You don't mind getting dirty. It might drip once or twice, and then it will stop. It will reach an equilibrium, and it will not lose any more ink. That means your seal is good. Okay? If it continues to drip, your seal is not good. Toss it. Start again. Really. It's, it's a pain in the neck to try to band-aid that situation. So, to test ink flow, if you take this off, and you get one or two drops and then it stops, that means you got a good seal. At this point, remove that plug and it should start dripping approximately, I always say two drips a second, but it might be, you know, a drip and a half every every second or so. You know, it, it, it could be just as long as it drips, 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 drips like that. That means you got a well flowing system here. Of course, you will lose some ink Put that plug back in, and it should stop dripping at that point. You want to re-verify that your seal is good. Put the clip back on it, remove the plug again, and top it back off. Okay, up to an eighth of an inch from the top, not higher than that. What happens if all of a sudden a cartridge is not flowing correctly? It's not able to keep up with the demand for a certain color. Okay, you're printing something that has an overabundance of, say, red, magentas, pinks, purples, that kind of thing. They use a lot of magenta, and your magenta cartridge is not flowing as efficiently as possible. You might start getting streaks, like ink starvation, they call it. That means it cannot keep up with the demand. It's like an assembly line, and either it overfeeds things you have to package or underfeeds. You have to have the correct ink flow. And of course, the only ones that do is original untempered OEM. That's it. Once you begin to mess around with these cartridges, you are reducing the efficiency, period. Even the experts cannot produce a cartridge that has been modified that will be 100% efficient. Take that home. All right, so what will happen is you get a color shift all of a sudden. You may end up with the first inch of the print looking normal, and then you will all of a sudden start losing color, a particular color. Worse would be multiple colors. Usually it's just one or two colors. Run a nozzle check. The nozzle check will tell you immediately what's wrong. If it's an excessive loss of ink, you will see the channel band not fully printed. Usually what happens is this, and this, was, this is what causes you to, okay, lose hair. The nozzle check may actually probably look correct. This is a Pro 1000 nozzle check, by the way. It may look correct. And the reason it looks correct is because a nozzle check requires very little ink. Okay, it's not an ink demanding type operation. You will only see the loss of ink flow when you're printing an image with an overabundance of a certain color. So that's, I mean, that that you will lose sleep. You cannot figure out what's going on. More than likely, it's your cartridge not providing enough ink. And the only way you can check it is to do that drip test, okay? It will not show up in a nozzle check because there is no demand like a real print demands. All right, I think that covers about everything I wanted to cover. Again, if you guys got more questions, just drop them in the comment section below. I'll try to address them. But again, remember, when you get into this, when you make that decision to start refilling, and I, I'm not saying don't refill ever. Of course, I do. I do it all the time. I do it now. I did it before. And years ago, I was doing it as well. But you have to approach it smartly. And you have to approach it with the most care possible because even the slightest little mistake can cause... The most important thing, ink flow problems, or worse yet, a leaky cartridge. It can happen, even with 
one of these cartridges, which are the basically the most foolproof ones there are, the Pro 10. So, unfortunately, I'm going to tell you how to have 100% reliability. This is the only way. I'm sorry. Once you get into this side of things, things are going to start plummeting, especially if you're not careful. All right. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. All right. Thank you so much. Happy printing. Don't worry about this. Do it right. Bye-bye, everybody.